Be bold, be brave, be extraordinary, be vulnerable, be real, be curious, be true, be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive, Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving, have fun along the way, and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life, and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please, listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. And oh my goodness. Yep. I'm a little nervous about today's show because this is a little bit of a vulnerable topic for me since it's pretty recent, but I'm excited to talk about it. And this is really about like the changing changes of life and what happens. And so I want to share with you sort of my experience in the last year and a half of hitting that later stage in life where women go through perimenopause, menopause, and their hormones start to shift. And when it happens, it is like <laughs> a little bit of like a heated sauna dressed as a bulldozer hitting you and you don't realize it. And a lot of women go into the wrongness or they go into what's happening to me and they start to resist or try to avoid the symptoms. And so for about the last year and a half, about a year and a half ago, uh, January of 2022, I started to get hot flashes. And when the hot flashes came, it was like, what the heck? This is insane. And just talking about it, I'm having a hot flash, right? And so at first it was like, oh no, right? We have these ideas that, oh, it's downhill or now there's all these problems that are going to happen. And I definitely experienced a lot of the symptoms um, for the first time in my life. I had sort of like an extra, <laughs> extra cushion around my belly. And, um, and so I got really depressed and went through crazy mood swings, hot flashes continued, couldn't sleep well. And, you know, I discovered a lot about myself in that process. And so what I did is I chose to not fight what was happening and slow down. And I wanted to do this episode today to give you sort of some life lessons I learned, as well as offer some possible solutions that you can integrate, add to, and incorporate into your daily routine. And so my whole life, you know, or I guess I should say the last decade of my life, you know, prior to a decade ago, I struggled with my body image. I struggled with my weight. I struggled with my self-esteem. And when I, you know, a decade ago, I solved it. I created a solution called the no judgment diet. And I started eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I lost four you know, dress sizes, lost some, some weight, ended up staying almost the same on the scale. And, and then menopause or perimenopause started to creep into my life. And it was like getting hit by a train and I felt like a train wreck. And so the symptoms that I experienced, uh, extremely lethargic, and I had been a pretty you know, fit athlete. Like I live in Aspen, Colorado. I skied almost every day in the winter. I bike almost every day in the summer. I hike. Um, I used to go for runs. I stopped running. So I would just go on walks. Um, I would do high intensity workouts like Pilates training. I was definitely very active. And and when I hit this stage in my life, it was like I couldn't work out anymore. Everything I did, I was exhausted. I was feeling depressed. I started gaining weight. I was eating less and still gaining weight. So it was definitely a challenging and frustrating time. But here's what happened for me 
is I had to go back to the beginning. So I wrote this book called Don't Diet, Be Happy, right? And in it is a bunch of tools. And I had to go back to the beginning. And instead of using the tools that had worked for the, the last decade, I needed to reframe my habits. I needed to reframe my relationship with my body. Because what happens in a relationship when you've been in a relationship for longer than 10 years, right? You hit that 10 year mark, which I've done. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, something needs to change. Something needs to shift. And the same thing happens with our bodies. So yes, I'm talking about, you know, like the female changes that happen, but this, you can apply this to any, you know, whatever age, whatever sex you are, because we always go through life shifts, whether we're going through a relationship shift, a business shift, a personal shift, a parenting shift, it always is changing. And so when we hit those life shifts, we tend to revert back to old habits that worked pri prior and previously. And so I tried all my old habits and nothing worked. And I was still depressed. I was still dealing with mood swings. I was still, still dealing with hot flashes. And, you know, in the beginning of the hot flashes, I was like, I don't know why women are complaining. I love it. So I would hit these moments of my entire body heating up. And here's what I know is when heat hits your system, our body is comprised of 60 to 76% water. And when heat hits our body, what it's doing is it's trying to eliminate things that it no longer needs. And so I would celebrate these hot flashes as evolution, right? I was like, yes, I'm changing. My body is changing. It's trying to get rid of old things. And if I looked underneath the surface, I realized that what my body was doing was getting me not just to have a physical life change, hormonal change, body change, but it was asking me to have a life change. And I was resisting the life change. So I had been teaching classes all around the world for a decade. I, you know, had clients all over the world and it was asking me for something different and I wasn't willing to listen. And so I spent like about a year sort of just trying my old tools, trying to work out, trying to cut back calories, trying to change my eating habits and nothing ever worked. So I sought out doctors. I sought out treatment plans. I kind of like, it's kind of like a diet, <laughs> do a different version of the same thing over and over again. And nothing was working. And so it wasn't until I got back to the basics in my book, Don't Diet, Be Happy, which Jack Canfield read and said is a game changer pattern interrupt and should be required reading for everyone. When I opened back up the book and I reread through the questions that you ask yourself when you're going through a change, I started to ask, what in my life is begging to change that I'm not listening. And I knew right away what it was. And I knew it was my business. I also knew that it was a personal life shift and it was time for me to spend a lot more time alone, being happy, being alone and reconnect to myself in a really different way. So I had to revisit dreams and targets and goals and let go of some and think of ones that were new and bigger than I had ever been willing to dream before. And it wasn't until I let go of the old version of my way of doing business that, you know, I started to have a lot more ease. And so I still have hot flashes, but now it's from a different place because I now have the energy. So I started walking a lot and, you know, a year ago, walking exhausted me. And now I go on daily walks. I'm able to ride my bike again. I'm able to do like these somatic exercises, which is really helping my nervous system. And so what it did is it just allowed me to be more introspective and look at what in my life needed a change that I was resisting. 
And so whenever we hit life challenges, life changes, and nothing that we've done in the past seems to work, it's time to redirect. And instead of relying on old habits or old patterns or old tricks that you used in the past, it's time to create new ones. And so I was able to create these new changes and it really made a difference. So I'm going to share some of them with you. And what I believe happens to women in their life change is that what's actually happening from an evolutionary perspective is you're increasing your ability to tap into your own awareness. You are increasing your ability to be aware of your surroundings. You're increasing your internal power. You know, I used to do Native American sweat lodges. And one of the times I was on my cycle, right, I was menstruating. And the the Native Americans believe that a woman, a woman when she's menstruating is in her biggest power. And so it's why they call it PMS, right? Like P menstrual syndromes. It's actually what I believe is happening is when a woman is menstruating, her ability to be aware increases thousandfold. And if you're not prepared for, you know, let's say you're in a stream and all of a sudden that stream turns into a flood, you're not prepared for that flood. It's overwhelming. It's chaotic. It's scary. It's frustrating. You're fighting for your life. And this happens to women every 30 days. And I just recently saw a video where a fireman, a fireman or a policeman hooked himself up to a stimulator that stimulated women's symptoms and the level of pain that they can tolerate. And they still have to do the grocery shopping, go cooking, pick up the kids, get out of bed in the morning, you know, work out, do their life, daily life things. And they put this up to one of the policemen. He said, you know, he was at a five and they did it from zero to 10. So one was tolerable, two was tolerable, three was tolerable. When he got to five, he was like, oh, wow, this is intense. And the woman said, would you want to go to work at a level five? He goes, oh no, I'd call in sick. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And, and she said, well, women have to put up with this every month every day that they're menstruating and they're on their period, they literally have to still go to work, still cook and clean, still make, you know, meals for the family, still clean the house, still take care of business, still go to work. And the guy was like, wow, such mad respect. And at 10, he was doubled over and was like wincing, trying not to show how much pain he was in. And so what happens is during that menstruation, a woman turns her awareness into a flood and it becomes overwhelming. And so women lash out in anger, they have mood swings, they get frustrated. And what Native Americans believe is that a woman is in her most connected power at that time. And so in Native American culture, a woman goes into something called a red tent. And the men, basically, it's, you know, like a woman's cave instead of a man cave. It's a woman cave. She goes into her cave and whether she goes on walks by herself or just like hangs out in her room or goes into, you know, Native American women would go into this red tent and collaborate together, men would leave you know, food and meals prepared outside the door, but they wouldn't engage with the woman when she was menstruating because it was believed to be a sacred time. And it's, and I believe it's a sacred time because you're reconnecting to a higher level of your intuition. You're up leveling your energy. You're increasing your awareness. You're increasing your connection to your own intuition and your connection to the divine, whatever your version of the divine is. And it also increases a woman's connection to herself. But when a woman isn't aware of that need to spend more time by herself, right? I remember when I was with my son's, my, my husband, my ex-husband, my son's dad, 
and we were married, we had separate bedrooms. And when I was menstruating, I would go into my room and not engage very often with him. And he knew to respect my space. So whether we, I ordered food or he brought me meals. He would know to leave me alone because those were the times that I would fight the most with him if I wasn't connecting to my higher self. And when a woman is also going through menopause and perimenopause, what she's doing is she's connecting to a higher version of herself. But if she is, you know, in resistance or fighting the symptoms or not allowing for that life change to also transform and evolve her external life, her relationships, her connection to her finances, her connection to her own spiritual practice, her connection to her physical body it's going to be a very tumultuous experience. And I personally know what it's like to have that tumultuous experience. And it's awful. It really is not fun. It wasn't until I was able to take a step back to start to internally reflect, to ask what I needed to change in my life. And what was this life shift preparing me for? And when I started to do that, my symptoms of depression and mood swings and anxiety and weight gain started to go away. The hormonal treatment therapies didn't really work. The cleanses didn't work, but I am going to share with you some of the things that did work. And so this is a reminder to all of you, whether you're male or female and listening to this, and especially if you're a male listening to this, please be aware of your, your partner. If she's a female, your partner's cycles and symptoms. And so if you notice that once a month you guys fight like cats and dogs and she's on her period, maybe it's time to like reset and say, Hey, maybe we should approach this time of the month differently so we can have a more pleasant experience going forward. I understand that you might be, you know, increasing your intuition. It might feel like anxiety. You might get overwhelmed. Maybe here's some things that we could do to support you. And it's the same thing in menopause. I have watched so many people go through divorce and I'm like, well, how old is your wife? 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, somewhere in that range when women go through menopause and I say, well, what's happening in her life? Sure enough, she's going through a massive shift and she's making a change and she's separating. I'm not saying that solu that's the solution. I actually think a lot of marriages would be saved and actually grow and evolve if we were more hip to have a conversation conversation around this kind of life change for a woman. I luckily am single. I'm a single parent and I was able to have, you know, sort of reconnect to myself in a different way. And yet there were moments with my son where I had to apologize because I was not my best self. I was not my best version. And now that I've kind of approached it differently and created a different experience around it, right? The weight is dissipating, the bulge around my belly is going, um, I'm eating differently. So I'm going to share some of those things that I did that made a really big difference. But the depression, the joint pain, the discomfort, the lack of sleep, it all was really intense. And so this is for you if you are either experiencing these symptoms or you're listening to this and you're like, you know, someone in your life that needs to listen to this and maybe do some research. But the, the medical advice, yes, is amazing. And please seek out your doctor's advice. Again, again, I am not a doctor. I am just an intuitive <laughs> that has traveled around the world and seen that I really believe that there's a lot of healing power in being introspective. There's a lot of healing power in releasing the past traumas that are trapped in our body. There's a lot of healing power in releasing our three primary core wounds, which are um, not, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not worthy. 
And when we can sort of set aside those three core wounds. And so when a woman is either menstruating or going through, you know, the beginning stages or the middle or the end stages of, of menopause, what's also happening is all of these old traumas that have been stuffed in the body for a really long time, they resurface because they want to get healed. But we don't necessarily have the awareness around that. So we create more pain. We create more trauma. We create more conflict in our life, whether it's financially, in relationships with our children and beyond, with our job and beyond. And so I, I believe that if we can educate ourselves, if we can have an internal experience and an internal conversation with our physical bodies, with our life changes, that we can empower ourselves to go through this experience in a much more effective, a much more pleasant, and a much more renewed way. And so to anyone out there listening, here's some of the things that I want to advise. And I took notes so I wouldn't forget. (laughs) So I would remember, right? And so here's the deal, like, right? This doesn't have to be difficult. And here's a few tips. So tip number one, throw away the scale throw away the scale, throw away the need to go on a diet to try to lose weight. The very first thing you want to do when you're going through menopause is you want to actually regulate your nervous system. So when menopause happens, we go through massive hormonal shifts, but what really is happening a lot of the times is your cortisol levels are spiking. Why? Because your body is in stress. It's in this changing time period. And we tend to not like change because we're afraid of what we're going to lose instead of what we're going to gain. And so I kind of took this mindset shift in my own life and I went, wait a second, I'm going to allow myself to shift my perspective and ask myself, what am I going to gain by going through this experience? And I got a whole lot of information. I'm going to gain more wisdom. I'm going to gain more self-awareness. I'm going to gain more respect for me. I'm going to gain a deeper level of intimacy with myself and my body. And so as you experience these life changes, instead of resisting and being afraid of what you think you're going to lose, like your fit body or like your age or whatever it is you're afraid you're going to lose, you want to ask the question, what are you going to gain? What do you think you're going to gain by going through this experience? So it's a huge thing right? To one, throw away the scale, to throw away the need to cut calories or go on a diet. But three, and probably the most important is to let go of what you think you're going to lose and start asking, what are you going to gain? Right? And then the second one is to wear clothes that make you feel sexy. So don't try to fit into your pants or your jeans or your dress that feels too tight. Put on your bigger size clothes. Don't look at the number of the size that you're putting on. So if you're used to wearing a small, go to a medium. If you're used to a medium, go to a large. If you're used to a large, go to an extra large, right? If you're an extra large, go to the next size up. Like don't be afraid to wear clothing that makes you feel sexy, that makes you feel empowered, that makes you feel good about yourself. Because when we try to, and this doesn't just apply to menopause, it definitely applies to when you're menstruating. But if you try to fit yourself in tighter fitting clothes, when your body is changing, it just reinforces not good. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy and I'm not lovable. And when you reinforce those three things, you activate the cortisol levels in your stress hormones, which also imbalances your nervous system. 
So the second thing you want to do is you want to regulate your nervous system. And there's somatic exercises you can look up all over the internet to regulate your nervous system, right? In my intuitive energy course, I offer these somatic exercises as a bonus, right? To show people how to regulate. In my six month coaching program, I office, offer these somatic exercises as a bonus, right? I have a background in somatic psychology. And so don't underestimate the power of regulating your nervous system, of slowing down, of going for walks or go swimming instead of if you're used to doing high intensity workouts, right? Um, and, and so this regulating your nervous system, meditate, go for walks, hug a tree, get out in nature, right? Journal. Journaling is a great way to sort of unleash your, your stuck thoughts that may need to get out that you have been keeping hidden or trapped, right? And then the other thing that's really important is to not judge yourself in this life change, not make yourself wrong. There is nothing to fix, no problem to solve, nothing to change. This is where can you grow? I heard a quote uh, today, or uh, I won't be able to regurgitate exactly the quote, but the the gist of it was when we are in a challenging time in our life, it's when we're also instigating levels of creativity. And so when you go through challenging moments, let's say you lose your business, you have to get creative about how you're going to make money. Let's say you lose your relationship, you have to get creative about how you're going to self-regulate. You can no longer depend on this person you might have been depending on for a decade or more. Now you're going to have to get creative of how to self, self-soothe, self of how to self-regulate, of how to entertain yourself, of how to cook for just yourself, right? How to nurture and nourish yourself if you're not getting physical touch on a regular basis. There are ways to get creative and this applies to life in general. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back from the break, we're going to continue. And if you are listening to this live and you would like to call in and ask for some advice or ask for me to download with you something that's going on that you need clarity on, particularly whether it's around menstruation or menopause, but hormonal life changes, I want to invite you to give us a call in at 202 570 7057. So 202-570-7057. And um, we'll be back right after these messages. Ohm Times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight, pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, traumas, and sorrows was already inside of you. Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does, you just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself. Invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. 
Through our produced shows, OM Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an OM Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on OM Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive OM Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. OM Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right, so welcome back from the break. We are talking about the lovely life challenges and changes that happen and what to do about them to create more clarity, to minimize your symptoms, and to have a whole new outlook on life. And so menopause, something that all women ha- you know, happens to. And, you know, I'm pretty young for, for menopause. I was not expecting it. And when it happened, it really threw my life for a loop. I wasn't ready to gain weight. I wasn't ready to stop being really physically active where I was biking, you know, 100 miles a week and doing high intensity workouts and hot yoga and skiing every day. And, you know, I wasn't prepared for to not fit into my clothes. And I wasn't prepared to feel depressed and have severe mood swings and feel like I'd lost like my drive in life. And what happened is I couldn't just blame it all on menopause, which is what we tend to do. We tend to blame it on our life circumstance. Oh, I'm, I'm menstruating, right? I'm going to blame it on my hormones. Oh, I'm going through a divorce. I'm going to blame it on that. And I'm not saying that those circumstances aren't contributing to a life shift, but I think that we need to start to have a different kind of conversation with ourselves and take more responsibility on what we can do. And it's my own personal journey, my own personal experience that all of the external solutions that I tried to regulate my hormones, to sort of manage my mood swings, to manage my weight gain, all those external things that I was doing, none of them really worked. But what did work was taking, like hitting the pause button and doing some serious self-reflection to ask, okay, like what's next? What am I not paying attention to? What are some of my dreams and desires that I'm not even letting myself have because I've been so focused on, you know, a decade long trajectory of my life. And so this is an invitation for all of you out there, wherever you are, it's good to do all the time is to start to have an internal sort of journey with yourself and whether you get more body work, whether you spend more time alone, whether you create a meditation practice or you get some energy work, like all those things, spend some time alone. Don't be so quick to fill the void from your loneliness. And, you know, I spent the last year and a half spending the majority of my time alone when I wasn't with my son. And it was the most powerful experience I've ever had. And I know that I am different. I'm no longer trying to hang on to my past successes I'm no longer trying to really like fit myself into this external world I thought I needed to fit myself in. And I'm more of been at at more peace with inside myself than I ever have. And so for any of you out there, starting this internal journey can be life changing no matter where you are on your journey. And so a few of the questions that you can begin to ask is, What's next? 
right? Do you have new goals or new desires or new dreams you haven't been paying attention to? What are you afraid to let go of? What are your biggest desires, right? Um, what are you hanging on to? Are you hanging on to toxic relationships, toxic friendships? Are you hanging on to a job you hate that you're afraid to lose, right? Are you worried about what's going to happen if you let your intuition in? You know, I talk to a lot of women. I have a really good friend who's an incredible astrologer and I get a lot of energy work done all the time. And I talk to women all the time and they're like, I'm scared to let myself know. I'm scared to be vulnerable in that way. And, you know, I know it can be scary. But what I will tell you is you will, when you get vulnerable with yourself, when you get vulnerable with your body, when you stop trying to fit your body into an unrealistic expectation when it's changing, right? Um, you will have an awakening inside of you that will translate both on the inside and on the outside. So when I started to go on an internal journey with myself, because the doctors weren't working, the medications weren't working, the severe detoxes I was doing weren't working, I started to go, okay, let's go back to the basics. Let's take the information in this book. You guys can see I've... <laughs> dog-eared this book quite a bit, the information in this book, and let's apply it to my new life path. And so whenever I'm in a life shift, I sort of let go of any frame of reference of the past, and I want to get to know myself today. As if I was taking my body and myself on a first date and getting to know me for the very first time, what questions would I ask? What would I want to know about myself? What lights me up? What drags me down? Do I need to let go of something or someone? And all of those questions get you to discover you so that you can create a deeper level of intimacy, a deeper level of vulnerability with yourself. But here's the deal. Got to be honest got to be honest where you are because that is when life will transpire and change and grow and surprise you in so many ways, right? And so a couple other things that I did in this transition to awaken into my gifts, and I will tell you as, you know, I'm an intuitive consultant, an intuitive energy worker, I've worked with, you know, some of the coolest most famous people in the world. And, you know, I, 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 I have been in this place right now where my intuition is at its all time high and I'm able to do things long distance that I used to have to do in person or used to think I had to do in person. And so now I'm able to let go of anything that isn't working, right? I'm also able to cultivate my, a deeper level of trust in myself. And with that comes letting go of insecurities. With that comes being willing to let go of those thoughts in our head that make us think that, oh, we're not enough or we're not lovable or we're not worthy. And the truth is every single person on the planet has insecurities. Every single person on the planet is a little afraid of being vulnerable. And when we can cultivate our own sense of self-awareness and get to know ourselves again, from a new life path and a new life shift, it will literally change everything in your world because what you will allow in, life falls apart, accidents happen, our bodies break down, we get sick. I was getting sick, right? I wasn't just experiencing menopause symptoms. I was experiencing an entire energetic, physical, and emotional breakdown. 
And in that breakdown, I didn't press the pause button to investigate further what was happening underneath the surface. I was like, oh, it's, it's hormones. I got to fix my hormones. And it wasn't until I spent time being vulnerable and intimate with myself, which was freaking scary. I'm not going to lie. It was uncomfortable to spend a lot of nights just with my thoughts, to spend a lot of time walking in nature just with me, to not sort of go outside of myself for external validation. And in that process, what happened was I was able to open up to receiving greater levels of awareness. And so when we resist receiving what's coming in, greater levels of awareness, any life change, whether it's a divorce or a job change, or you're menstruating, or you're going through menopause, or you get married, or you get a divorce, or you you know have to experience a court case, any massive life change that we go through is the universe literally like overwhelming us with information. And what we do instead of receiving that information to grow and evolve, we tend to cut off, right? We tend to contract. We tend to go internal. And I think it's important to do that. I think it's extremely important to go internal, to maybe like be a little bit more selfish with your time for yourself. But what will shift this for you is if you realize and recognize that this time in your life, whatever life challenge or change you're going through, if it's a big one, is that the universe is asking you to increase your willingness and ability to receive. Most of us stink at receiving, especially if you're intuitive, especially if you're a healer, especially if you're a giver, especially if you're a people pleaser, you're not good at receiving. And so guess what? The universe is trying to break down the barrier you've built around your comfort zone with your level of receiving. And it's asking you to expand out, to get bigger, right? To grow, to become more self-reflective, to increase your confidence with inside yourself, not external confidence, not the fake it till you make it kind, but that internal knowing that who you are is amazing, that there's nothing wrong with you. There's no problem to solve. There's nothing to fix what the universe is asking of you in these massive life, life shifting times and life shifting changes is to increase your willingness to receive. Remember I used to, anytime I would be given a gift, I used to automatically go, how can I give back? How can I give back? How can I repay this person? I don't want to owe them anything. I don't want to be in debt. I want to make sure they know I'm grateful. I better do something back for them. That isn't receiving, right? That's an exchange, which can be receiving. But if you're not actually receiving a gift in the moment and you're already thinking about how you can repay this person back, you have taken yourself out of the equation of practicing greater levels of receiving. Compliments are a great way to practice increasing your willingness to receive. Right. And so this life shift is knocking on your door, not so that you can break down. The breakdown is evidence that it's time to be more introspective instead of externally focused on a solution. Now you can do all the external solving you've ever done in your life. But until you practice going inside to develop a relationship with yourself where you get to know you on an intimate basis, this cycle of having good come into your life and then a bad cycle and then good and then a bad, and you feel like you're on this constant like evolutionary hamster wheel until you get 
that all of life challenges, all of life's challenges are designed to increase your creativity, increase your connection to yourself, increase your connection to your intuition and your awareness, increase your connection to the divine, you'll be on this energetic hamster wheel for a long time. And so life shifts are always meant to happen and they're meant to happen to help you grow, to increase that power that is inside of you that becomes unstoppable. And so I feel your pain if you are in the middle of menopause and dealing with weight gain and depression and symptoms. So I'm going to share a couple other things that I did that really made a big difference. And this is some stuff I never thought I would do. I have been a chronic um, meat lover and meat eater. I was born in the Midwest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And um, my mom grew up like tipping cows for fun in high school, right? That was their level of enter entertainment. And so I grew up in a family where it was like steak and potatoes, hamburgers and fries, <laughs> Um, you know, bratwurst and cabbage, <laughs> like, um, liverwurst was a big, was a big one in my family or just liver it was like, mm, never and Brussels sprouts, never my favorite, but I basically grew up eating meat and I never in a million years thought that I would be, be like more of a vegetarian or more of a vegan. And accidentally over Easter, so April, 2023, I was staying with some friends who were vegan and they ate vegan for four days. So I ate vegan for four days, right? And at the end of those four days, I felt amazing. I was still, you know, experiencing symptoms. I still was bigger in my body than I like being or comfortable being. And at the end of those four days, I was like, well, I wonder if I just continue eating like a vegan. And so I, I'm not obsessive. I have allowed myself to eat eggs. I have had dairy. I have had meat. I have had chicken. I've had fish. Like I'm just making different choices with my food and eating predominantly plant-based foods. So whole live foods. I cut out processed foods, made a huge shift in my symptoms I added in DHEA, which I have a liquid form that I take every day. I also started putting estradiol and progesterone on my skin to go to bed at night. Um, I cleaned up my gut microbiome and got some tests done so that I was familiar with foods that my body was asking for, foods that maybe weren't so good, even healthy foods that weren't so good for me. So I began educating myself and not just from the external, but I also began seeing if it matched the internal shift I was making. And so, um, you know, changing my diet, I started cutting out alcohol, right? And I remember some of my older friends being like, oh, I stopped drinking wine because it gave me horrible hot flashes and horrible mood swings. And so I just started to not drink as much, right? And I'm not that big of a drinker, but I do like my tequila. I do like my red wine. Um, but cutting out drinking also changed it. Um, so taking supplements that matched increasing the healthy gut biome in my body and getting rid of, you know, the unhealthy gut microbiome. But then I also started talking to my body. I know it sounds weird, but I would put my hands on my kidneys and I'd say a little prayer of gratitude. I put my hands on my liver and spleen. I'd say a prayer of gratitude. I put my hands on my heart say a prayer of gratitude. I put my hands on my, you know, belly where my intestines and my internal organs were and say a moment of gratitude. And that really seemed to help. I got comfortable slowing down, exercising way less. I got comfortable not exercising at all. And I think this was a huge shift. And I know it's counterintuitive to everything I teach and talk about, but I had to especially, you know, having a history of having a disease, eating disorder, having a history of having pretty low self-esteem, I needed to be okay with not relying 
on external means to make me feel better. And look, exercise is one of the first things when people say they're depressed or they don't feel good or they aren't motivated or they don't know what to do in life. I like, go for a walk. And when exercise, when I say exercise, go for it, start walking, walk an hour a day, walk three, you know, I walk three, at least three miles a day, every day. And some days if it's required and my body's like, no, but I find that walking morning or night after a meal, whenever it is, go for an hour, go for 20 minutes. I tend to walk, you know, an hour a day, whether it's all in one lump sum or, you know, strung together in different ways. Going for a walk, moving your body can help. But for this purpose of re introducing myself to myself, recalibrating, right? Releasing the stress hormones that I had and having a healthier relationship with not working out because I also was an exercise addict. I needed to not work out because every workout in the past was like, well, it's because I'm burning calories because I'm staying fit. I needed to go, you know what? I'm going to rest and it's not going to, you know, make me fat. That was my biggest fear, which kept me on this hamster wheel. And so all of you, which is why I say you got to be vulnerable. You got to be willing to be intimate with yourself and reacquaint with this new you. You are in the process of letting go of an old identity that you no longer need. And it's time to up-level your energy. So here is a great question to ask to know whether or not you're increasing your cortisol level, stress hormone, which keeps weight on no matter how little you eat or how much you exercise. And if you're over-exercising, you will continue to increase your cortisol levels. But one of the great questions you can ask to apply to your body, but it can also apply to money, business, whatever, is does this choice expand my energy? Does this choice elevate my energy? Do I feel better afterwards? And if the answer is no, chances are it will increase your stress hormone and say goodbye. No, thank you. Sayonara. <laughs> time is up. I'm not going to keep doing it. So you want to ask right now going on walks is greater for me than going on runs and over exercising, going to my hot Pilates or hot yoga classes, right? Hiking is great for me, right? Um, biking, but not all the time right? And not doing my crazy, crazy rides that I would do. And so this is about getting more intimate with you. So you want to ask, does this choice elevate my energy, expand my energy, or does this choice decrease my energy or contract my energy? And anything that contracts your energy, it affects your nervous system. It increases your cortisol levels and it will keep weight on your body. Hello, sweetness. Nice to see you. So my friends, this is really important because all of us several times in the course of our life will experience really big life shifts. And when those life shifts happen, it is time to pause press the pause button and make some different changes in our lives. And so these tools from today's episode will help you regain a connection to yourself that increases your intimacy with you, that increases your vulnerability, that gets you to know who you are. And so if you are in a life shift, if you're a female going through your monthly hormonal life shifts, these tools from today's episode are going to really help you so that you can go through this change with confidence so that you don't have to be afraid of what you think you're going to lose. Instead, you can look forward to what you can gain 
right? So I may have lost my abs at the moment. They're slowly coming back. But what I've gained is more confidence than I've ever had. What I've gained is a business that I freaking love. What I've gained is connecting with people all over the world that light me up, that know more than I do. What I've gained is more like more connection with my son, more pausing, more time to be there for him and not obsessing over things I can't change. And so every single one of us faces life challenges where we are going to have to lose. Don't be afraid of what you're going to lose. Instead, start looking forward to what you're going to gain. If you have big dreams in your life, you're going to have to be willing to let go and open up for something totally new. So appreciate the life challenges because they do instigate inspiration. They instigate creativity and they will allow you to grow and evolve and become the you you always wanted to be. Just because you're happy where you're at doesn't mean you don't want more. So look forward to the future because every, we all go through it life changes. And you know what? It's time to change the conversation on it being a bad thing and instead open the door for it to be something where you look forward to because you know it grows you in ways you never could before. So thank you for joining me on today's episode. If this resonated with you, please share it, comment, send us a message, share it on social media. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician. 